Live from 42nd and 2nd, this is New York's very own PIX11 News at 10. Now at 10, police shown on camera preparing to remove hurricane victims from a Manhattan hotel. The Legal Aid Society sharing this video with us tonight. All the storm victims have to be out by tomorrow morning, but some still say they have no place to go. Yeah, the water also off or barely flowing for most of Hoboken tonight as repairs get underway. Now there's a blame game over who's at fault for rupturing that water main. Thanks so much for joining us, I'm Corey Chambers. And I'm Tamson Fidel. Well, this problem started yesterday around midday. Today, a hospital had to partially evacuate as a result. Katie Corrado live in Hoboken tonight with the latest timeline right now on this whole fix. Hi, Katie. Hi, Tamson and Corey. Hoboken is still under a state of emergency. Veolia has isolated the ruptured main, but says that the work will continue into the night. And the hospital expected to transfer out about 40 to 50 patients overnight and into tomorrow morning. Mayor Ravi Bala says the residents may also see some smaller water breaks occur periodically over the next few days and weeks as the system stabilizes. Reporting live in Hoboken, Katie Corrado, PIX11 News. Man, what a mess. Mm -hmm. uh, Katie, right. thank you. All right, well, although it didn't stick in Manhattan, people did have to dig out from uh, several inches of snow in a lot of parts of New Jersey. Yeah, some snow also stuck in the Bronx where people were taking advantage of the wintry weather. See a little snowball fight action there, building some snowman, some mm -hmm. snow angels. You know the deal. I was waiting so long because I love snow. It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> the other people happy about the snow, plow drivers and car washes. This is one of their last chances to make some money off of the snow. All right. So, Mr. G, this was your big moment, G. And I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, And then it just melted it's... away. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's a big moment when the kids are smiling, right? And they're laughing and they just steal a show with their happiness. But right now in the Midtown area, we're in for a chill of 31 degrees, 29 degrees up to North Newburgh. You can see the flow of air a little bit off the ocean. It seems like a couple of scattered showers in the hopper for early on Thursday, and then we're going to dry it out. That GFS model, we watched a little bit of precip to the north. It's a rain event because we're so mild. And then you could see again uh, for Thursday, we'll keep in a period of showers a little bit in the afternoon. There is a wrinkle in the forecast for rain and or snow uh, developing around here on Friday. Who gets what and when? We'll time that out in the seven-day forecast. We'll have it all later on. All right, G, thanks. Well, the deadline is tomorrow for people displaced by Ida to leave a Manhattan hotel. And uh, you're seeing some video from the Legal Aid Society. They share it with us, showing police removing someone over the weekend. Yeah, that's right. And some families say they still have no place to go. Jay Dow live in lower Manhattan with their stories tonight. Hi, Jay. Hi, Tams. You know, in putting together this story, it became clear that there are layers of problems, including affordability, that's preventing these people from getting back on their feet. A spokesperson for HPD tells us there are still a number, a handful of families spending their last night at the Millennium Hotel. They are working with those families. We'll find out their fate tomorrow morning. We're live in lower Manhattan tonight. Jay Dow. PIX11 News. Jay, thank you so much. Well, we are just learning about a disturbing situation at Newark Airport where federal agents found a bag with a fake federal marshal's badge and three guns inside. Yeah, that's right. One of those guns was an AR-15. All this happening back in December. A man trying to get onto a flight to Fort Lauderdale at the time. The guns, a taser, a knife all found in his checked luggage. Yeah, the man is from Wallington and has a prior weapons conviction. He's now facing two charges. A Long Island man sentenced to 25 to life for stabbing a high school student to death. It's a case that shocked the community there. Yeah, the deadly stabbing was witnessed by dozens of other teens who didn't intervene but recorded it. Big 7's Eileen LaPalmer joins us live from the Mineola Courthouse with latest. Eileen. And as you can imagine, Corey, those cell phones were awful for the loved ones of that 16-year-old victim to watch. Now, all of this had started as an after-school fight over a girl. And the defendant was 18 at the time, now 22 years old. He learned his sentencing for that murder. And Tyler Flack will begin serving that sentence as the appeals makes its way through the court system. We are live here at Criminal Court in Mineola. Eileen LaPalmer, PIX11 News. Right, Corey Eileen, Thompson. Thank you.
Well, making sure what you look like doesn't keep you from getting your dream job. How a new size freedom bill would protect workers. Yeah, and your Metro card could soon go the way of the dodo bird. Uh, the MTA is trying to get people to switch the Omni and the timeline for all this. Plus, when we took prayers out of schools, guns came into schools. That's not all the mayor said this morning at an interfaith at prayer breakfast. Coming up, the comments that have people questioning his commitment to the First Amendment. We're back in 90 seconds. Dead whale was spotted in the waters just south of the Ambrose Channel. That's the primary lane ships use to go in and out of the port of New York and New Jersey. Yeah, wildlife officials determined it was a humpback whale. They sent crews to document the situation, but might not be able to relocate the carcass because of the bad weather. Well, this is the 13th whale to die or strand itself along our coastline since December 1st. It's not clear how the whale died. Several previous whale deaths were blamed on collisions with boats. Well, today, a crowd rallied outside of City Hall. They want New York City to protect workers from weight-based discrimination. Yeah, that's right. There is a measure under consideration right now called the Size Freedom Bill. What do we want? Size Freedom! Do we want it now? The bill would prohibit discrimination based on height or weight. It would apply to employment, housing, and access to public accommodations. Advocates say workers desperately need the protection. They are shamed and bullied for their size, and that's not right. Our workers are refused jobs and promotions, and that's not right. The bill's sponsor says passing this would make employers think about whether size played a role in their decisions. Mayor Adams' office is responding to controversial remarks he made at an interfaith prayer breakfast this morning. Yeah, the mayor appeared to advocate for prayer in public schools, saying removing prayer from classrooms has led to a rise in gun violence. He also dismissed the separation of church and state. Listen. Don't tell me about no separation of church and state. State is the body. Church is the heart. You take the heart out of the body, the body dies. I can't separate my belief because I'm an elected official. ACLU rights advocates condemning the comments, saying the U.S. was founded on the principle of a secular government. Well, tonight, the mayor's spokesman said Adams' policies are rooted in his belief in a creator. He also said his words were, mis were understood by uh, those from multiple religions in the room and are being misrepresented by those trying to, quote, hijack the narrative, end quote. Well, swiping on the subway will someday be a thing of the past. The MTA saying the tap-and-go system is... Well, it's the way of the future. All subway stations and buses now have the technology. You can just swipe and get on board. In fact, uh, they started, they started mm -hmm. rolling out in 2020. Yeah, they sure do. The MTA wants more riders to use it. And tonight, uh, meet the new chief of customer service officer and uh, learn how it's going to make it easier for riders to adapt to new systems. Greg Maka reporting from Brooklyn. There is an express five train. The subway has a soundtrack. The bus has a beat. A ride begins with that familiar tone. But a swipe isn't the only action that makes that sound. Yeah, I can tap and go, but I do it the old-fashioned way. Millions of rides every month begin with a tap and go. More every month. The fare payment system is called Omni, which stands for One Metro New York. I remember the token. You can't have New York without the, the subway system. Shanifa Riero will talk about her hour and a half commute from Morris Park in the Bronx to Lower Manhattan and her major role at the MTA. The benefits of me being in this role and with my 90 minute commute each way, I get to see and hear and feel every function of it. She's the MTA acting chief customer service officer in the meetings, making sure voices and concerns of customers are discussed. It is what it is. Yeah, it's all right. It's good when it's good. It's, it's horrible when it's bad. Some stations don't have convenience like for an elevator. We're really looking to meet our customers where they are. New 24-7 customer service centers are opening. Station agents will be available on platforms. They answer questions and process some transactions that used to be available only at headquarters or by mail. Atlantic Avenue Barclays is one of the first to open. 
15 will be in service by the end of the year. Coney Island and 161st at Yankee Stadium are open. These other stations will get the new customer centers by the end of the year. We are all about using every lever possible to tap in and connect with our customers. Omni can be a deal. Ride 12 times between Monday and Sunday, and beginning with your 13th ride, it's free. No need to buy the weekly Metro card up front. Some reduced fare rides are also now available. One of the questions that I get asked most often is about the Metro card. How much longer can I hold on to this? How much longer is it going to work? The MTA now estimates substantial completion for transit would be 2024. Omni vending machines that sell Omni tap and go cards will begin appearing later this year. And an app is coming too. The Metro card will still work for a while and gradually be phased out. Many riders will probably keep it in their wallet for old time's sake and shop around for the best deal in transit. In Brooklyn, Greg Mocker, PIX11 News. Tonight in Queens, hundreds of people at a terrace in the park in Flushing Meadow for what it's called the Evening of Fine Food. Yes, the 27th annual event that supports programs that help adults and kids with developmental disabilities. And we're especially proud of our MC tonight. You just heard him, and there he is, our Greg Mocker on hand. Lots of good food and mingling, all for a fantastic cause. Nice. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and talk about what is going on outside. 36 degrees, different than last night. Hi, G. Yeah, much better. And uh, what we're looking at now is generally a milding trends. Good late evening, dear viewers. 37 degrees in the park. That's Newark in at 39. That's Bridgeport in at 36 degrees. The sky is generally a cloudy, but they're breaking up now, thinning out. The storm is departing the last 18 to 24 hours. Uh, and again, you look at the snow amounts, and you can see Monroe at the foothills of the Catskills, 6 inches Croton on the Hudson about 5.7 uh, Carmel and about five inches Cold Springs at about 5.6 Little Neck uh, and the park, Lucas Central Park, 1.8. So Oakland in the corner of New Jersey, 6 inches. Cranford Township, an inch. Widespread, wide swath even on Long Island. Center Ridge to the Hamptons, 4 to 5 inches. Ron Conkerman, not far away, 2 inches. New Canaan, 7 inches. That's North Haven. And you see Old Lyme in Connecticut. Now, in terms of Canadian temperatures, the buildup of cold there is not there. That's important because as you look to March to see if the Lions going to roar right now it looks okay okay that's the rain amounts in the tri-state area that is your wednesday that's a gorgeous thursday a little bit of rain snow in the hopper looks like more rain than snow that's for friday we'll check it out as we move along weekend's coming we'll have that later on all right g thank you well coming up are dangerous chemicals tainting the air at nitro buildings why residents are so concerned and the BQE could be uh, getting a major makeover on Brooklyn Heights. The plans to combine more park space with the expressway. And Mentors Wanted, the nonprofit that needs help right now to, to really help out some lives. And you can get involved, too. That's ahead. You have been through a lot in nine years. And I'm very proud of you. It's not over yet. I need your help to save the world. I have nothing to live for. Yes, you do. I'll show you. John Barry? No. We can do the impossible. Flash. Let's do this one last time. The Flash. Final season, new episode, Wednesday at 8 on the CW Pix 11. 106.7 Light FM from the 80s through today. Cubby and Christine mornings, they go together like pumpkin and spice. Oh, good, because I'm definitely spiced. Okay, so you're saying I'm, I'm pumpkin. Thanks. 106.7 Light FM. Traffic often crawls along the BQE, and the same could be set for the process to redesign the busy stretch of roadway. Yeah, the New York City Department of Transportation released some new ideas for the section that runs through Brooklyn Heights. Could extend the Brooklyn Heights promenade and create a park over the road decks. It would connect the neighborhoods to Brooklyn Bridge Park and include pedestrian access. Yeah, these plans are still a couple years away. Well, city council members held a hearing today on the air quality at public housing complexes. The council considering requesting $3 billion in additional funding from the state for public housing improvements. NYCHA officials say the agency reworked its inspection process for detecting and removing indoor allergens like mold and pests. But resident advocates told the housing committee that more aggressive air quality monitoring is needed. 
They also say exposed dirt from construction work at the complexes is often a source of dangerous contaminants inside the buildings. The soil's eight feet high, right below the windows, and we know that that's a possible, powerable source of arsenic and lead. Council members are calling for more direct oversight of contractors to make sure waste from projects is being safely removed. Tonight, legislators from New York and New Jersey coming together to announce a bipartisan plan to close a funding shortfall in the World Trade Center health program. From New York, Senator Schumer and Jill O'Brien, and from New Jersey, Booker Menendez. Many firefighters, policemen, and other first responders and their families still get aid from the program. During the last Congress, an additional $1 billion was provided to help fund the plan. There is now a shortfall, and they need more. All right, the pandemic forced changes in New York City's Big Brothers, Big Sisters program. Yeah, most of the interactions between teens and their mentors moved online. Now they're returning to in-person activities, and the demand has never been greater. Six Seven's Monica Morales was with uh, 27-year-old Clara Lucera, Lucera who, uh, when she met her little sister for the first time, they'd only connected online over the last six months. Yeah, they both say being a part of Big Brothers and Sisters has really enriched their lives. Right now, there are more than 2,500 young people that are paired with mentors across New York City, but there is a growing waiting list for teens that still need mentors. It's making a great difference. Mentoring is malleable. Mentoring is easy. Mentoring is accessible. And it requires a little to do a lot. You can find out how to volunteer with the Big Brothers and Sisters at pix 11 Com. Well, still ahead, some good news for New Jersey commuters out there. The latest commitment from the governor in his budget. Yeah, and police say robbers prepared days ahead of time for this violent theft of a jewelry store. Video's tough to watch. How they tricked the business owner into opening up the door. An update on the dangerous drug trank. The new step federal officials are now taking to keep the so-called zombie drug off of our streets. We'll have it when we come back. You're watching the PIX11 News at 10. Police have two new suspects in this violent jewelry store robbery that sent a 79-year-old woman there to the hospital. Police now believe thieves had a sophisticated plan and used phone spoofing and an Amazon vest to get past security measures. Thanks so much for staying with us tonight. I'm Tamson Fidel. I'm Corey Chambers. The crime played out last week in Flushing. The robbers got away with half a million dollars in jewelry in the video. It's tough to watch. Phil Johnson has a story. Well, major development, a story we have been reporting for the last week or so. The federal government is moving to restrict imports of Trank. Yeah, it's the animal tranquilizer being added to street drugs. The FDA will now limit its entry into the U.S. The animal sedative is medically known as xylazine and is supposed to be used as a pain reliever for horses. Instead, as we've been reporting it, it's been uh, ending up uh, in fentanyl and the heroin supply. Yeah, Trank is turning drug users into zombies and causes dangerous sores on the body that can lead to amputation. The FDA wants it to maintain the availability of the tranquilizer for animals. And Stay with Pix 11 News the latest on Trank and its spread locally. You can watch Mary Murphy's reports from Philadelphia and here in the city on Pix11.com. Well, lower property taxes and higher investments in education among the proposals in uh, New Jersey, Governor Phil Murphy's budget. Yeah, he unveiled the $53 billion spending plan this afternoon. The budget includes doubling the state's child tax credit to $1,000 per child and investing in green energy. He also is calling for an expansion of the tax freeze for senior citizens and no NJ Transit fare hikes. For many homeowners, their property tax burden is going to be lower than it was in the year 2013. And this budget will support goals like getting ourselves to a 100% clean energy economy by the year 2035. And we're going to maintain our investment in our commuters by giving them a sixth straight year of no fare hikes on NJ Transit. The governor also announced today he is moving his offices back into the executive state house, which has been undergoing renovations for his entire governorship. Well, coming up, Nissan recalling more than 800,000 vehicles. The SUVs can shut off while they're being driven. What owners need to do with their keys right now. Well, lots of people feel burned out at work, but the cause could surprise you. And oftentimes the root of that stress is a sense of betrayal. How betrayal burnout is different from regular burnout and how to cope.
And how Staten Island reestablished New York City's role on the hip hop scene at a time of West Coast dominance. We take a look and talk to Wu Tang Clan's Ghostface Killer. Ahead. Gothamites have a new generation of protectors. Their new heroes are also their most wanted fugitives. You almost revealed yourself to the entire world. I had it under control. You might be pregnant. How? Clark. We have to stick together. I'll be there as soon as I can. Superman and Lois, Gotham Knights. Premieres Tuesday, March 14th on the CW Pix 11. All right, time now for your Strictly Business Report. Starting off with a look at Wall Street. Here's how the markets wrapped up today. Stocks ending the day down. The Dow dropped 232 points. Well, Nissan is recalling more than 809,000 small SUVs in the U.S. and Canada. The company says the move is due to a problem with certain rogues and rogue sports that could cause the ignition to shut off while the vehicle's in motion. Officials said the SUVs have folding keys that may not stay fully open and can lead to the fob being touch, cutting off the engine. Nissan is still working on a remedy, but advising owners to not attach anything else to the key ring and to contact dealerships for details on this. Well, you've probably heard the term burnout when your work becomes too long and too hard to cope. Now, researchers are discovering another key cause of burnout, betrayal. It's when you feel cheated, lied to, when a promise is made but not kept, and on the job, it can be debilitating. Betrayal is actually the breaking of an expectation that we have relied on that ruptures our view of the self or our world. It can be something global like the pandemic that ruptured all of our view of how the world worked, or it can be something more personal like not getting a promotion and having it rupture our view of ourself as a valuable employee. That expert says a good way of dealing with this type of burnout is first coming to terms with why you feel betrayed, then focusing on yourself, your expectations, and finally setting boundaries. And that's a look at tonight's Strictly Business Report. Corey. All right, Thompson. Well, Wu-Tang Clan might be the most famous hip-hop group to come from Staten Island, but they certainly aren't the only big name. Shoot a few of me, just forgive me, for how the borough sound evolved from R&B to a much grittier reality, and how their influence is still being felt. Nana Harry sat down with Ghostface Killa. That's ahead. And coming up in sports, the Nets welcomed Giannis and the Bucks into Brooklyn. All the highlights and the details are straight ahead. Tomorrow on the PIX11 Morning News from the new horror film Daughter, actor Casper Van Dien is here. Then on New York Living at 10, he's transforming restaurants and changing lives. From Restaurant Impossible chef Robert Irvine drops by tomorrow on PIX11. Welcome to the Ferris Show on television. It's nice to have you with us. We really want kids to carry guns because there's a bully at school. Why should we let them possess firearms. To be fair, it really is a photo op. That's what this trip was. Is this a solution in search of a problem so Ron DeSantis can talk about what he's done to address the border crisis? To be fair, it didn't happen under the Trump right. administration either or the Obama administration. And the only way to get the truth is asking some tough questions. The Weather Report is brought to you by Toyota. Dear America, we're here for you. Best Toyota. Staten Island might not be the first borough that comes to mind when you think of hip-hop, but perhaps it should be. Of course, it's the home of the Wu-Tang Clan. It sure is. Fix up and Zana Harry is tracing how the sound of hip-hop evolved in the borough and talking to uh, Ghostface Killer about the impact it's still having. <laughs> and that was Diana Harry reporting for us. Okay, we're going to have a new report every night this week on the borough by borough evolution of hip-hop. We had the Bronx yesterday, mm -hmm. Staten Island tonight, and I'm, I can't wait to see what's next. Maybe Three Queens? We'll find out. All right, let's go ahead in the meantime and check out what's going on weather-wise. Hi, G. All right, we're going to rock into this forecast in terms of drying out and becoming milder. You can see 37 degrees. The normal should be 45, the regular 67, 632 sunrise. And I think you may see that. There'll be some clouds around that could be a scattered shower. And when you look at this forecast, you'll be able to see, again, 
45 degrees on Wednesday, Thursday, 53, Friday. Again, a chance of snow changing to rain. Uh, that'll be the storyline. And it could come down hard before it tapers off on Saturday midday. And then 44 degrees, spot shower on Sunday next week, seasonable temperatures. New month tomorrow. And the weekend, the pick of the weekend at least, right now will be Sunday. Gee, thank you. All right, let's talk some sports, Mark. Yeah, guys, let's do it. Nets hosting the Bucks. Milwaukee riding a 14-game winning streak, and they had Giannis Antetokounmpo back after suffering a quad injury. Are the Jets running out of time when it comes to landing a veteran quarterback? We'll have the latest on both Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr coming to the Jets straight ahead. There you have it. That does it for sports. Tamsin, Corey, back over to you. Mark, thank you. All right, let's get to Plan G before we go. <laughs> All right, here we go, everybody. Uh, it's a nice, easy forecast. Uh, we'll settle down till perhaps Friday. goes down like this. 45 and 40 is the split. 53 and 34 is the split with a shower around here on Thursday and maybe some p.m. showers Wednesday. Rain or snow, that is a bigger event. Looks like more rain on Friday. Over the weekend, it tapers off. Pick of the weekend Sunday. Next week, seasonable. Gee, thank you. And yeah, thank you so much for joining us at Pick 7 News at 10. I'm Corey Chambers. And I'm Tamsin Fidel. Seinfeld is next. Good night. Mets, Rays, March 12th at 1 p.m. on Pix 11. Celebrating 75 years as New York's very own, this is Pix 11.